Well, it is official. Joe Biden will become the next president of the United States, and Donald Trump has in fact been defeated. A lot of mainstream news outlets have not called it yet, but I'm making the call right now. Uh, Decision Desk HQ is projecting that Joe Biden has won with 273 electoral votes, and they base this victory off of Pennsylvania. Now, last night, he pulled ahead in Georgia and Pennsylvania with where they're at with the vote count. And based on where these mail-in ballots are coming from in more blue areas, they're projecting that he's going to win. So most likely, not only will he win uh, Nevada, but he's probably going to win Georgia as well. And even though Decision Desk HQ has not officially called Arizona for Joe Biden, Fox News and AP has called Arizona, but they don't need to call Arizona to project that Joe Biden has won. So, you know, it's fine that the news outlets are being a little bit more conservative in their projections. Nonetheless, I think we know that this is going to happen. Joe Biden has won. Donald Trump has been defeated. And um, let's just take a moment to uh, sit back and try to digest this information. Wow, it has been a very long and uh, just mentally taxing couple of days, but basically it's all over now. And I think that by the end of today, we will see all news outlets make their final projections. Again, the counts probably won't be finished. The results won't officially be certified uh, until quite some time. But still, we have enough information now to determine uh, with a relatively high degree of confidence that Trump's out of here. So what does this mean? Well, it means that between now and January 21st, when Joe Biden is sworn in, Donald Trump is going to be pissed. He's already insufferable. Crying fraud with zero evidence to back up that claim. His supporters across the country are either, uh, depending on if Joe Biden is ahead or Trump is ahead, uh, chanting, stop the count or count the votes, whatever works out best for them. Um, but they're going to have to grapple with the reality that there is no fraud. There's no evidence that there's widespread voter fraud or election fraud. This was a win. And it's not a shocker that a lot of Republicans did not vote by mail because Donald Trump instructed them to not vote by mail because he told them not to trust vote by mail. So it's not like, you know, uh, they're counting these votes and they see that Donald Trump is ahead and all of a sudden... They're like, oh, well, look at, I just found these pro-Biden ballots out of nowhere. I guess we should count them. Like, that's not the way that it works. If they were truly rigging this, then they're the dumbest at election rigging ever because they would have taken Texas, they would have, they would have taken Florida, so we would have known on election night that it was Biden. Uh, they would have rigged the House, the Senate, but they lost ground there. So there's no evidence of widespread election fraud. And you can, you can tell that that's the case because as Donald Trump files lots of legal lawsuits across this country, they're being thrown out left and right because there's, there's no evidence. You have to present something. You can't just cry fraud and present zero evidence. So he's winning on some procedural issues, but whenever there's this claim of fraud, whenever there's this claim to stop counting the votes, can't do it. And his intent is to have the Supreme Court ultimately hear whatever he wants to be heard. I don't know if he wants the uh, mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania, for example, to be invalidated. But you have to take this through the court process. You can't just ask your loyalists on the Supreme Court to do what you want. It has to work its way through the system until the Supreme Court grants you a writ of certiorari, if it even gets to, you know, the appeals process. Like, it's over. Donald Trump doesn't have a path to victory. And at this point, the odds of him actually stealing this, it's just not there. So he's going to have to grapple with the fact that Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States. And we are going to have to brace ourselves because for the next two months, oh my God, he's going to be fucking pissed. And I'm laughing because it's going to be funny to watch him melt down. But understand that that, that two month period... That is a long, long time where a lot of damage is going to be caused because Donald Trump is angry and doesn't want to take action while he still is the president of the United States. So what I mean by that is even though Donald Trump already kind of undermined his own moratorium on evictions, as of January 1st, that expires. Landlords can evict people amid a pandemic. Do you think that between January 1st and January 21st, Donald Trump's administration is going to take action? Now, perhaps people in control of certain agencies can take measures, but I mean, is Donald Trump himself going to do anything for the American people during this period? No, because he's going to try to punish people, punish all of us for not voting to reelect him. 
So in terms of getting a new stimulus, some for some reason, I, I, I mean, I was shocked when I heard this. Mitch McConnell is saying we should we should do another stimulus package. Now, is Donald Trump going to be open to that now? So this is why we needed this before the election, because we don't know. There's too much volatility and uncertainty, and we just we don't know how Donald Trump is going to act. And we can only anticipate that he is going to be uh, the biggest baby and try to do as much damage as possible. And in terms of COVID-19, I mean, if it's going to get better, if Joe Biden gets in and immediately implements a lot of measures to try to get it under control, it's going to get a lot worse first. I mean, we're surpassing 100,000 cases per day. And uh, Donald Trump is not going to do anything. So it's going to be a really long road ahead until Donald Trump is out and we get Joe Biden. So look, I am feeling happy right now. Even though Joe Biden is not going to be a good president, he's going to be a bad president. Donald Trump is unique. He is uniquely bad, uniquely evil. Joe Biden is predictably bad, predictably evil, right? So it's kind of like we can either have another four years of Donald Trump to where he continues to do more and more damage, or we can see some victories, even if they are small with Joe Biden. He said he will be getting us back into the Paris Climate Accord on day one. Already. Really huge thing to celebrate. That's that's really important. If he actually gets us into the Iran nuclear deal, assuming Iran is even willing to come to the table with us after we just ripped up the deal that we signed with them that was difficult to negotiate in the first place, that would be great. If uh, Joe Biden reinstates DACA, how many lives that is going to benefit? That is going to be phenomenal. Now, that's not to say that Joe Biden will not be uh, someone who causes damage as president. He's going to continue the U.S. war machine. And that is really, really troubling. Uh, I'm hoping that he ramps down drones. We don't know because what happened was after Obama took office, he ramped up Bush's drone war. And then once they realized how many civilians they were killing, they had to ramp it down, scale it back a lot because Obama basically just gave the CIA autonomy to use this program as they wanted to. And they were killing more civilians than they were actually enemy combatants, right? And furthermore, this is illegal because if you haven't declared war on these countries, then you, you can't just be in these countries bombing them. But once Trump took power, after Obama had scaled down drones, Trump ramped them up by more than 400%. 400%. So if Joe Biden ramps them down, even though he's still droning them, and that's unacceptable, still, Hopefully, less people will be bombed, less civilians. I mean, it, what we're working with is some marginal victories that I think are better. Like, the world is better off with Joe Biden as president. I mean, and it sucks. Like, it, we shouldn't have to choose between uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and that's over now. But what I'm saying is, you know, if you feel relieved, I think that that's okay. Like, we can, we didn't get Bernie Sanders. But we can still feel a little bit sense of, you know, relief knowing that Donald Trump is out. You know, the fascism hopefully um, will be minimized. I don't think it's going to go away, but at least white supremacists won't be emboldened because they have someone in power. You know, at least maybe we have a shot at getting Joe Biden to meet with some of the Black Lives Matter protesters to implement some of their agenda, even if he doesn't listen to them. At least he'd be more willing to to meet. So, uh, meet with them. So here's the thing. Joe Biden has a short window to act. Uh, I truly believe that he, if he does not do enough to help people, this is going to be a short presidency. He's going to lose uh, ground. Democrats will lose ground in 2022. And in 2024, Democrats will uh, see turnover. Because this election, I think it's really obvious that Trump probably would have been reelected. It's difficult to qualify this, but or, or to quantitatively assess this, right? Not not qualify. But it's difficult to quantitatively say, oh, well, we know for sure that Trump would have won a re-election if it wasn't for COVID-19. But I think he would have. So if Republicans put up someone who is at least somewhat like Donald Trump in 2024, the same policies, same pseudo-populist appeal, I think that Joe Biden will be defeated in 2024. So he can stop that if he actually takes action to meaningfully improve people's lives. Now, a lot of what he can do will hinge on the Senate, which will come down probably to some runoff races taking place in Georgia. And all Democrats need is 50-50. And then Kamala can break a tie if need be. Now, what's going to happen? We don't know. But for now, Donald Trump, who is causing the most damage currently, is going to be gone. And it's going to be really irritating to listen to him whine for two months. He probably won't 
uh, accept the results of the election or concede. But he's going to have to grapple with the fact that his time is up come January 21st. Now, I don't know what to expect on the day of Joe Biden's inauguration. Is, uh, you know, Donald Trump going to sit in the Oval Office and like cross his arms and say, I'm not leaving. Uh, I think that would be hilarious if he actually did that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that the more likely outcome is that Donald Trump is going to have to leave. You don't have a choice. Like, do you embarrass yourself even more or do you try to leave with dignity and try to like, I don't know, put together the pieces so you can try to rerun in 2024? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Joe Biden is going to intentionally be a one-term president where he steps down and allows Kamala to run uh, in his in his place and another Democratic Party primary to take place. We don't know. But all we know is that for now, the better outcome has happened. And it might not be, you know, the outcome that we all wanted. It might not be an outcome that is good enough to warrant, you know, um, the change that we need. But for now, it's a little bit of easing off of the pressure and the damage that is being caused. And I, I think that we should we should feel relieved. We should we should celebrate that fact. Because even though Joe Biden is going to be a bad president, I have no doubt about that. I hope he proves me wrong. But even though he's going to be a bad president, there's no way he could be as bad as Donald Trump. So, you know, I think this is this is good for the country. It's good for the world. And I hope that he does enough to uh, make it so that way the Republicans aren't so influential. And I don't know that he is going to do it. He's already kind of showing signs that, hey, guys, we've, we've got to unify with the Republicans. So that basically means he's going to compromise away all the Democratic Party's values, what little they have, and try to forge some sort of grand bargain that is going to be functionally right wing. We don't know. But still, Donald Trump is defeated. That in and of itself is a reason to celebrate. If you pretend like it's not Joe Biden who's coming to power <laughs> and you just look at the fact that Trump was defeated, that's that's a good feeling. It is a good feeling. So, yeah, I'll leave that there. Joe Biden will become the next president of the United States. Donald Trump is on his way out, and he is not happy about that.